Moving on to the next segment of today's show, I wanted to talk about the Dallas Cowboys and their victory during the Sunday 430 window over the Los Angeles Chargers. I get the game was technically in Los Angeles, but if you really watch the game, given all of the Cowboy fans that made their way to the new beautiful SoFi Stadium out in LA, it really did sound like it was a Cowboys home game. And somehow, some way, the Cowboys ended up getting the win. Final score 20 to 17 on a Greg Zerline game winning field goal at the buzzer to give Dallas the victory. And a couple things I wanted to talk about. If you've listened to this show, you guys would know that going into the season, I picked Dallas to finish in just typical vintage Dallas Cowboys form with a record of eight and nine. Obviously, now with the 17 game season, Dallas can finish eight and eight. I feel like over the past couple years, more than that, really over the past 10 to 15 years, that eight and eight record has really been the consistent Dallas Cowboy record when it comes to the full 16 game season. And I expected them going into this year to be around a 500 football team. And I think the crazy thing is, when you look at this NFC East, from a talent perspective, we could all agree, Dallas has the most talented roster in the division. And a lot of that has to do with their starting quarterback. Dak Prescott, really over the last two games, and even before that, is the best quarterback in this division, especially now when you consider... Everything going on with Washington, I do think Taylor Heineke is the best option for them at quarterback going forward, even with Ryan Fitzpatrick, if he was healthy. Uh, You guys know how I feel about Daniel Jones. I get he played well on Thursday night football. I'm still not the biggest believer in him, and I like Jalen Hurts, but he still has a whole lot to prove. Dak Prescott certainly has done more, and next week, Monday night football, Dallas and Philly will battle, so that should be one heck of a game, Uh, both of those teams sitting at one and one. In week one, the Cowboys played very well against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially on the offensive side of the ball. I was really impressed with how Dak Prescott looked, even after everything that went on in training camp, considering, obviously, the devastating ankle injury that he suffered last year, and then the shoulder injury that he had uh, lingering him in camp. Like He's looked really good over the first two games, and I totally understand that on Sunday against the Chargers, <coughs> excuse me, I don't even think he played particularly well. He played okay. I think he made enough plays to end up getting the Dallas Cowboys the victory. <coughs> excuse me. But at the same time, I do think that Dak and the rest of this Cowboy team, for the second week in a row, they, it, they were in a close game. They had plenty of opportunities. But at the same time, They didn't play their best game. And I think in week one, they played really well, but that was just a matter of the Buccaneers being what I thought was the better, more talented team. And when it comes to Tampa Bay, I think we saw this in their week two game against Atlanta. They're just so tough to beat. Even when you think you're right back in the game, Tom Brady could just strike at any time. And we all know how good that Buccaneer offense is. And I think Dallas gave them their best shot. Even with their best shot, Tampa Bay was not able to get the job done. But in this game, it was a different story. The Chargers gave this game away. I think they had many opportunities to win this game down the stretch. And unfortunately, they just couldn't take advantage of it. And the one thing that if you're a fan of the Los Angeles Chargers just absolutely kills you in this spot was the number of penalties that your team took throughout the game. And I understand the refs didn't help you. I get that really not every one of those calls was a penalty, but at the same time, that's just an excuse in my opinion. I know that Justin Herbert really was not down on that call when the referees called the sack and they gave him forward progress, but still, it's one bad call. If you're a good football team, you need to find a way to win that game. The main point and the main takeaway I have from this game, however, is that I am just still not the biggest believer in this Dallas Cowboy team. And I'm not really 100% sure why. I just told you guys to start off this show. I think they are the most talented team in the division. And they really don't have any excuses not to win this division. Especially after week two, they came away with a really impressive road victory 
over these Los Angeles Chargers. However, there were just many things throughout the game that made me concerned with the Cowboys. Now, if you've listened to this show, another key point when it comes to Dallas that I've mentioned is I am not a fan of Mike McCarthy. I think that during his years in Green Bay, even though the Packers had a great run and they consistently won divisions, I think if they have a better coach, there is a really good chance that Aaron Rodgers is sitting here now with more than one Super Bowl ring. And Mike McCarthy just didn't have the Packers ready to play in so many big games. That NFC Championship game against Seattle is the one that stands out to me the most when he was just continuing to kick short field goals on fourth uh, and near the goal line. And ultimately, if you remember, the Seahawks had the big comeback and that's what ended up winning them that NFC Championship game along with the onside kick fumble uh, by Brandon Bostic. That is a play that is going to live in Packers fans' dreams and nightmares. And Dallas brought in Mike McCarthy before last year. And the craziest thing about Mike McCarthy was that He took the 2019 season off, and he made it clear that during that 2019 season, his his first year off from coaching in a while, he became Mr. Analytic. He made everything known to Jerry Jones in his interviews that he was just really an analytic guy now. He said he watched every play of the 2019 season from an analytical perspective. That was the exact quote that this guy used. And then later, in his introductory press conference, he said he was lying to Jerry Jones just so that he could get the job. I call Mike McCarthy the biggest con man in the NFL. However, I'll actually give him credit where credit is due. I think that Kellen Moore, the way that he's been calling plays has been really good. Obviously, Kellen Moore was one of the few guys who stayed over from the previous regime with Jason Garrett. And he is one of the better offensive coordinators in the NFL. I think Dallas's play calling over their first two games has been really, really impressive, really balanced. I also like how Mike McCarthy didn't really care that his $90 million running back wasn't necessarily the best running back on his team. And he gave Tony Pollard more carries because flat out, I'll say it, I just think Tony Pollard right now looks better than Ezekiel Elliott. So I'm not even having a problem with Mike McCarthy running the the hot hand when it comes to the running back position. I think Tony Pollard looked really good in this game. And if you're a Cowboy fan, you have reason to be excited that he is going to hopefully have a much bigger impact in this offense. However, as soon as I started to give Mike McCarthy... Just some props based on the way the Cowboys were playing in this in this game. Then the field goal happened to end the game. And I'll, I said it once, I'll say it again. Greg Zerline, man, Mike McCarthy is lucky because Greg Zerline really bailed out the Cowboys in this spot. If he misses that kick, Mike McCarthy is getting crushed throughout radio and sports TV programming today based on the way he handled the clock in that situation. And after the game... He tried to give an, ex- an explanation on what happened. He said the his view of the clock was blocked. Then it came off the screen. Kellen Moore's view of the scoreboard was blocked. And to be honest with you, it just sounded like an answer that I would give my dad if he caught me red-handed with my hand in the cookie jar before dinner. Like, it was that bad of an answer. And I just don't trust Mike McCarthy to be the uh, uh, winning head coach for this Dallas Cowboys team in the future. Now, they found a way to get the job done, and I do think the NFC East is still very much winnable and is still in their reach, just because, once again, I don't really think the division is particularly good, and Dallas is the most talented team in the division. But at the same time, I think the Chargers lost this game more than the Cowboys won it. And I do think Monday Night Football coming up this week, Eagles-Cowboys, that is going to be such a huge game because... Even though the Eagles lost to the 49ers and they lost Brandon Graham, which is just a devastating injury for the Eagles, he's going to be out for the season with a torn Achilles. They also lost Brandon Brooks in that game, one of the better offensive linemen in the league. I think we saw last year just how the Eagles looked without him in the lineup. It wasn't very good. He's not going to be out for the season, but he's going to be out uh, for the next couple weeks. It will be apparent that he is going to be missing the Monday night game against Dallas coming up. And if you're the Cowboys, the bottom line is... Even with the amount of injuries you had, that Monday night game is a game you got to win. However, 
One thing I was really impressed with with Dallas was Micah Parsons. And when it comes to Mike McCarthy, I still don't trust him, but I'll give him credit for this also. Demarcus Lawrence got hurt, and not only did he didn't get hurt in a game, he got hurt in practice. Like, at least when you get hurt in a game, it feels like it's inevitable. There's nothing you could really do. He was putting everything on the line in a game situation to help his team win. But when you get hurt in practice, and no one sees it, and all of a sudden it's just boom, you're out, that sucks. And it's just a real gut punch. When you combine that with everything going on with Lyle Collins, he didn't even show up to a drug test. That just means he basically knew he was going to fail. And he didn't only miss the drug test once. Like, it was a multiple time thing. So if you're the Cowboys, that's not something you want to hear. Obviously, Zach Martin was back in the lineup, but he was uh, out in the early portion of the season with COVID. And the Cowboys just had a lot of injuries and a lot of forks in the road, but they realized that Micah Parsons, even though he hasn't played defensive end and has put his hasn't put his foot, his hand in the ground uh, since his high school days, the Cowboys made the adjustment to put him at defensive end. And I think that, and he was able to get a lot of pressure on Justin Herbert. And that was one of the main reasons I thought why the Cowboys won. Justin Herbert didn't play particularly bad. I thought he made a couple really nice throws, but the Cowboys were able to get just enough pressure for them to win. If you're a Charger fan, it's the same old story. The amount of penalties you had in this game just killed you. And it's crazy because on this show last week, I gave the Chargers a lot of credit after they were able to go on the road and beat the Washington football team in a close game. Just because, historically, that is not a game the Chargers win. I feel like there is not a more cursed team in the NFL than the Chargers when it just comes to the amount of close games they always lose. And the fact that you were the better team in this game, you were just penalized throughout, and Greg Zerlon hits a 56-yard field goal at the buzzer to win after, in week one, he literally couldn't make anything for Dallas. I mean, he did make that kick to give Dallas the lead, but early in the game... He missed an extra point. He missed a chip shot field goal, which I think ultimately did cost Dallas. But good job rebounding. And the Cowboys are a team that I just think has a lot to prove. They deserve some credit for just finding a way to win this game in Los Angeles. One thing about the NFL, a win is a win is a win, and you're never going to regret it. Unlike college, you don't need style points in the games you do win. So the Cowboys do deserve some credit for that. But... I'm worried about this team going forward. I still don't trust Mike McCarthy. I think they were lucky to get away with the win. And they just need to play better. They need to be coached better. And what does Mike McCarthy do well? Not much. I don't really know what exactly he brings to the table as a head coach. Dallas and Philly, Monday Night Football, should be a really good game.